Lisa and I am the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com and today I have another art journal process video for you. I am working in my Dina Wakely media journal which is full of all different kinds of paper, all different kinds of mediums and I've been um, really growing as I've worked through this because it challenges you in unique ways and I have really enjoyed learning as I go. So today I am back kind of in the middle of my book and I am focusing on this burlap side right here. I think it will bleed over to this side but I'm not sure that I will finish this page so we'll just see how it goes. I'm planning on using Jane Dav Davenport acrylic paint. I love this paint because it dries flat so it is very easy to use paint pens over the top of it which I am hoping to do. All right I will put you all on fast forward. I will link everything that I end up using down below. Otherwise let's go. Okay, so this is confession time. I am a creative person, so yes, I like to work when creativity strikes, but because I create YouTube videos and blog, I also have a schedule. And this was one of the times, one of the few times where it was time to do an art journal page on my schedule and I just, I wasn't feeling it. I didn't really know where to start. And so I just went to one of my favorite uh, mediums, which is acrylic paint. I love acrylic paint. I love how bold it is. I just wasn't totally sure what I was going to do. So I just pulled out some acrylic paint and started, for lack of a better term, just kind of slapping it down on the page. So I'm leaving that part open in the middle and I'm starting with some blues because I kind of want them to be the basis of the page. And I'm not being real definitive as to where they're going. You can see it's really kind of rough and kind of random, but I'm just using up plenty of that paint and covering up that burlap with the color. I love the texture that still comes through when you're working on the burlap. And that's one of the best parts about working in this Dina Wakely journal is the texture. You guys know, you hear me talk about it all the time. I love texture and this is like a journal full of it. So it it's all about working with that and not fighting it. So that's what I was doing here, working with all the different blues. You can see I'm not even um, rinsing off my brush until I'm done with the blues, but I've used those as kind of the basis. Now I'm going to pull in some of this bright pink and I will add that to some different parts on my page, mixing it in with the blue because then you get, of course, my very favorite color, some beautiful purples, but mixing that in in some different spots, not even coverage. That's not what I'm hoping for. I just want it in certain areas, um, just little hints of it peeking through and actually I'll end up layering some more blue over the top because the pink did get a little bit intense. Now I'll pull in this bright lime green and it is, it is bright lime green with Jane Davenport. She is not messing around. So it really does make a big impact once you put it on your page. And this is a green that I'll pull in, um, in a couple other spots, but I really do like it. And you can see it's automatically, as soon as I started putting the paint on the page, the creativity really did start coming back. I might not have been feeling inspired right when I started, but when I kind of forced myself into it and really just went for it, just putting paint down in this kind of haphazard way, it started flowing. I really started feeling it. I started kind of seeing a direction and you can see that's why it did start spilling over to the left side of the spread and it does end up being a double page spread just because I was in it. I was in the flow, but sometimes it's really hard to get started and even for people like me that I, I create something on a daily basis, like every single day I do something artistic. Um, let's say 90% of the days I do something artistic, but it's still hard sometimes. Sometimes you're tired and sometimes the creativity isn't there and you just have to push through. If that is something you know you love, which for me it's something I love, especially art journaling. I really, really love it. It's a great release for me but it doesn't always come easily. And sometimes it involves um, pushing myself outside my comfort zone and just trying something and seeing what comes out, which is what I'm doing here. Now the red is kind of the surprise color. It's the color that I would not have expected on this page, but I like bringing it in in these little dots. It's a little bit unexpected, which is um, something interesting with art journaling. Now I have this middle section and I've pulled out the white and this is like a pearlescent white. These are all Jane Davenport's acrylics and I just wanted to cover up this burlap here and so I start pulling in this white but I really like how it's looking as I'm spreading it over the other parts of the 
um, acrylic that's on the burlap. So you're going to see me start spreading it out. And this is where the page really starts creating a kind of creating on itself. It's just little parts that are inspiring me. And so I just go with it and I play with the shapes and I'm seeing as I'm working just the swirl developing that I am loving. So I start playing with this swirl idea and I bring it out even farther um, on both ends. And you know what, now that I'm looking at it from a different perspective, it totally looks like a face. Like it totally looks like a face that's starting, but that's not where I ended up going with it. But you can see that even if I'd walked away at that point and then come back, I might've seen that face and might've taken the whole journal page a different direction. And that is what is so fun about art journaling. So here is the face that I decided to go with. This is a Jane Davenport large stamp and I love the stamp. It's one of my favorites to use just because I love the look on this girl's face. So I actually don't have a large stamp block. So I'm just using this one. I'm using the backing. I just leave it on the backing, pressing it in to get as great of an impression as I can. And then ta-da! there's my girl and I have her and it's like she's looking away from whatever is happening whatever's happening with that swirl she is looking away from it so I'm gonna take that same iridescent white and I'm filling in over here on this kind of watercolor paper and what I end up really liking is it's hard to see on the camera the acrylic paint wasn't completely dry over here on the left side. And as I'm mixing in the white, it's kind of dragging in bits and pieces of the other colors. And it makes a super cool pearlescent color when you're, when you see it in person, like I said, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but it really did serve nicely to bring those other colors, just hints of them, streaks of them in to the rest of the design. So I add it to the bottom there and then I'm actually gonna go over the top a little bit and you can see it a little bit more on the top, how it's pulling in that dark maroon, that deep red color and loving how that's looking and it really brings those two pages together and kind of connects that white over to the swirl. So now it's like that is connected. That's part of that girl and she is part of whatever is happening in that magnificent swirl going on on the right. So this is one of my very favorite stencils and I do not know where it is from. It's just been in my stash for a while and normally I work with it vertically and I decided to turn it on its side and I'm using that same red color because I had found it so intriguing and I will be just filling in some of the circles here and there with that red color. I end up being a little bit too heavy handed so it bleeds a little bit under the edges of the stencil, but that's okay. I take care of that in a different way, but I probably just should have used a little bit less paint, done a couple more layers, um, been a little bit more patient, but that's okay, it happens. I'm gonna add it there on the side. You see, I put my stencil down too fast and I actually even just got random burgundy paint, but it happens when you're art journaling, things happen and you just work around it. So adding in a few of those circles over there on the lower part, I love how it's bringing the maroon in. I'll bring it here to the right side of the spread just to add a little bit of a cohesive look. And I'll do three circles here on the bottom of the spread and then I'll end up adding one circle up here at the top just to kind of complete the look and bring all the corners together. I am a little bit annoyed with myself that I was so heavy handed on the stencil work that I ended up letting the paint run underneath the stencil. So I take my Posca paint pen. This one is in a blue that matches really nicely with the blues um, from Jane Davenport. And I am just tracing each circle. And this is definitely one of those art journal pages. These don't have a meaning. I just liked the look of them. I liked the blue coming in over here on the left side of the page, having an excuse to bring that in. I liked the color, um, the color scheme that I went with for this page. Not every art journal page has to have um, a purpose or an intention. It can just be fun playing with products, playing with patterns, playing with things that you like that you want to see combined together and they can still really create a pleasing page. And this is one of the most pleasing pages that I've created in this Dina Wakely art journal. In, in my opinion, I really enjoyed the process. I really enjoyed the page in the end. It just, it, it really, um, 
kind of met my artistic needs, I guess, for that day. So I'm using the black paint pen to add a little bit of a stitching effect around all of the circles. Just again, more texture, more interest around them. I just want them to feel like they were kind of sewn on. So adding that on all of them. Um, I'm really having to make sure I'm letting the paint dry. If you rush it, then it, it would be really easy to start smearing paint all over the place. I decide my girl looks slightly detached because she is all in black and white and I don't want to fill her in, but I am going to add some blue streaks in her hair so that her hair ties in with those circles, the same blue color that's in those circles and her hair ties in a little bit more to what's happening over on the right side of the page. And then I'm going to get just a little bit of that maroon paint and I will add that same color to her lips so that she looks as if she's part of um, the painting. And then I actually end up adding a little bit of shading with that maroon. Um, not sure if I like how that turned out. I mean, it looks a little bit like she is bleeding. I don't know. I wanted shading. I should probably come back and try it with the dark blue instead of the maroon. Um, so I might come back and address that a little bit more. Using the white paint to cover up just a little bit of um, the paint that I smeared on the bottom on accident and added a few more white streaks to her hair. And now I will work on lettering um, right here in the middle of my swirl. I end up choosing the statement, don't miss the moment, which is something that I am really focusing on for the summer of 2020. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of an art journal page. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button. I have all of the links to the supplies that I use below, so make sure to check those out. Those affiliate links really go a long way to supporting this channel. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.